Hello you beautiful, beautiful people, welcome back to Forza Horizon 4, welcome back to the channel, I hope you are well. Today we're checking out one of my favourite cars in Forza Horizon 4, the 2020 Ford Mustang Shelby GT500. Let's go, 760 horsepower. So if you are new around here, definitely consider subscribing. Let's go check out a new Mustang. Add this crowd killing monster to your garage you have to complete a seasonal championship called flex your muscles in the summer season for series 32. and here it is forza horizon 4's newest car the shelby gt 500 absolutely fantastic car and i'm already in love with it and i've only been driving it about 10 minutes we've got a 5.2 liter supercharged v8 pushing out 760 horsepower through a seven speed gearbox two the rear wheel so you can kick the back end out as you please and Ford or Shelby have done such a good job on this car it handles really really well for completely bone stock I've got a couple of builds in mind for the Shelby I can't wait to jump in and have some fun I want to pack in a lot of horsepower to Shelby see what it can do without further ado let's take it for a race right then unbeatable driver styles modern muscle let's see what the 2020 Mustang can do 760 horsepower from the factory, absolutely insane. Making short work of a bright yellow Camaro with pink wheels. A bit odd, even I wouldn't do that. It's a color scheme, and some of my color schemes are a little bit suspect. But first corner, chuck her in 130 miles an hour, power on, no dramas. Although we've hit a wall, still no dramas from the back end, which is interesting as this thing is rear wheel drive and has a fair bit of power. But it's doing well so far, taking down driver's cars quickly and easily. Now, I would love to purchase the Shelby GT500 in real life, but there is an issue with that. As I live in the UK, I can't actually buy it. It's not being sold in the UK due to emissions. Because of the 5.2 litre supercharged V8 up front, it doesn't meet emission standards in Europe or the UK. So I can't ever actually own one of these unless I move country. This thing is insane as we go down the inside of the Cadillac. Job done, power on, a bit of drama, nothing too major. And we're off. This thing is mental, it handles really well. Stop with 760 horsepower. I thought it was just gonna be drifting all over the place, but actually, it's really, really good. Completely bone stock, we're coming up on 180 miles an hour. In actual fact, we're coming up on 190 miles an hour. Oh, we're only in fifth gear though. We've still got two more gears to go. Coming up to the finish line, it's 185 across the line. First place for the Shelby GT500. Now, completely bone stock, the Shelby GT500 is very impressive. What's more impressive is that we didn't hit any crowds. That is the impressive part of this car. But let's go ahead, check out some upgrades. First things first, we've got to check out engine conversions and completely stock, like I say, 5.2 litre supercharged V8, 760 horsepower, 625 but pounds of torque. It's quite heavy at 4,100 pounds, but we can sort that out with some weight reduction. Or we can swap in an 8.4 litre V10 from a Dodge Viper. Absolutely not. 640 horsepower, 600 foot pounds of torque, but we're definitely keeping the Ford engine, 760 horsepower. And I can swap in a four wheel drive, but I think I'm going to keep it rear wheel drive just to keep it a little bit more challenging. We do have the option to go twin turbo. It does add 175 horsepower, bring us up to 935. For this first sort of race car-ish build, I want to keep it supercharged. We've got race tyres completely stocked. We can add the writing, we can add rally tyre compound, or we can add drag tyres. I'm going to keep it with the race car tyres for now without the writing. I'm going to make them a little bit wider, front and rear. That's 325s at the front and 335s at the rear. They are some thick, thick tyres. Now, wheels I don't want to change. I am going to make them slightly bigger because these are carbon fibre wheels from the factory, from Shelby or Ford, whoever makes this car. It's got Ford emblems in the middle of the wheel, so I'm guessing from Ford. But we can make them 21s at the front, which we're going to do, and 21s at the rear. Obviously, we can do our good old wheel spacers, which sorts our fitment out absolutely perfectly, front and rear. Once we drop that on some race suspension, it's going to look perfect. Here we go. Good old race suspension. Are you ready for it to drop? Look at that, it even adds a little bit of camber just to bring in the wheels. I'm actually aiming for S2 with this build. I always build an S1 class car, 
Let's go a little bit crazier. Let's go for S2. So we're going to do the full weight reduction. 740 pounds. It takes off 3,310 pounds in weight. This thing is going to be fast. I've gone ahead and fitted all of our power upgrades to our stock engine. Bear that in mind. It is a stock engine from the factory. 1,176 horsepower, 910 foot pounds of torque. Bear in mind as well, we are still rear wheel drive. As it's a race car build and we are running 1,100 horsepower or more, we are going to fit some aero. So we're going to go with the Forza front flap. Now I know it's not the best looking thing in game and it doesn't look too bad on the Shelby GT500, but it is there more functionality. We're also going to do the rear wing, which interestingly, the stock rear wing on the GT500 is fully adjustable in settings. So there's no reason to fit a Forza rear flap. So after we're all said and done, essentially all I've done is fully upgraded the Shelby GT500. 3,246 pounds in weight, 1,176 horsepower from the stock supercharged 5.2 litre V8 class S2944. Rear wheel drive, bear in mind, 61,550 credits worth of upgrades. Now painting options for the GT500 of this week, we got advanced painting options. Paint group one is the main body of the car, which I want to make white. And then paint group two is sort of all the accessory pieces on the car. As you can see, if I make it a really bright color, that's sort of all the little bits in between all the body. Now what I want to do is go ahead and make that carbon fiber to match the carbon fiber wheels. That looks really, really cool. Here we go, Shelby GT500 rear wheel drive, 1,100 horsepower. Now, I'm not expecting to win this race, I just want to see what this thing can do with max power and rear wheel drive. I'm hoping it's going to be alright in the corners if I'm careful with the throttle. I know it'll be fine on the straights, it can do 220, 240 miles an hour. But like that, let's nip up the inside here, what a beautiful overtake that was. Oh, I must say, stepping the back end, I was slightly in third gear, full throttle, better it around in second. Ease the power back on, a little bit of wheel spin. It's all good though. Mustang handling it well. That's a Dodge Charger beating me. Come on, unleash it, let's go. 155 up into fourth, come on. Unreal it, unreal it, let's go. Reel them in, reel them in. Ooh, he's hard on the brakes. I'm gonna down the inside for a late break. Can we get it done? Up his inside. Yes, we can. Back on the power. Woo! Back in, stepping out slightly. It's all under control. We get another position up into fourth. No doubt, four wheel drive would be quicker off the line. That goes without saying, really. But once the race gets underway and we can get into the corners against modern muscle, there's no stopping the Shelby GT500. Look at that as we pull out of that corner, down the outside, little late braking. Tuck it in. Easy on the power. No, we've lost our gorgeous rear wing. That's weight reduction in my view. Come on, Shelby GT500. We've got this. We're in first place. Let's go. If anything, keeping it rear-wheel drive is just good fun, but that's across the line. First place for the GT500. And normally this is part of the video where we go drifting and we get the car sideways. This week is no different. We are chucking on the good old drift suspension. And we're going to get the Mustang sideways. We're keeping everything else exactly the same, keeping it rear wheel drive, we're keeping it 1176 horsepower. I can't switch up the tyres because completely stock. The Mustang sort of has race tyres anyway. So that's the only thing we're going to have to change on the Mustang. For anyone that's curious of how I tune my drift cars, tyre pressure at the rear I always put up to the max, so 55 psi. And the fronts I usually run around 45 psi. Differential, I lock the rear, so I put the acceleration up to 100%, and then DXL, I usually have around 40%. Now, this isn't technically the best way of doing it, but it gets results, and I usually get three stars on drift zones with this kind of setup on my drift cars. I think we all know, rear wheel drive, 1,100 horsepower, and a Ford Mustang, it's going to get sideways. It's not going to do too badly. It's just my skill level that might let it down slightly. So let's go Ford Mustang GT500. I picked a zone. With no crowds, so no one can get run over. Well, that's not bad. It's fully controllable, he says. Ooh, go on, third gear, rip it. Boom, cross the line, 102,000. That's not too bad from the Shelby GT500. Let's go hit another drift zone, as this is insanely good fun. Right, let's go, the Horizon Festival site. Let's chuck it round that. I reckon 40,000 points for the Shelby. 
What can we do? Come on, run it around the outside. Eek those points. Power on in third. Look at that, 41,360. A little bit of a wall tap at the end. Let's go. But there we go. The Shelby GT500 in Forza Horizon 4. Let me know in the comments what you think of this car. I absolutely love it. I love Mustangs. I'm a bit of a Mustang fanboy. But let me know what you think of this car. But as always, thank you so much for watching. If you are new around here, definitely consider subscribing. Stay safe and have an awesome day.